the maps are great, but they do not show the daily life of a human being. What is the effect of that on daily life of people? Um, and I think that the, the situation is much, much worse than the pictures and uh, slides could show. During the 2011 school year, I taught a seminar uh, at Duke on uh, housing issues in East Jerusalem, and uh, we had a group of 11 students in the seminar this semester. Uh, part of the seminar uh, involved having the students actually take a trip over to Jerusalem during their spring break, uh, where they were able to study some of the issues that they had been reading about firsthand, and then after they returned, uh, they're now writing up a big collaborative paper about the issues uh, that, they, that they've studied in the seminar. We traveled to Jerusalem to better understand the housing issues and how those impact the peace process. It was a very complicated assignment and the intricacies and complexities became more apparent as we learned of the facts on the ground. The focus of the seminar was on how international law might relate to uh, housing rights and property rights in the area that is called East Jerusalem. Um, so it particularly was focused on the rights of Palestinians with respect to construction of housing, uh, demolition of housing, issues about whether they have a right to return to certain areas um, in uh, either Jerusalem or in uh, the main part of Israel. Um, and also issues about municipal services and discrimination of, between Israelis and Palestinians. Since housing is so inextricably linked to our lives, um, the problem continued to expand and it would take us in directions that we didn't expect. But I do think that it allowed us to get a broader and more comprehensive sense of what was going on there than we perhaps could have with another focus. We met with residents from Sheikh Jarrah, um, as well as Silwan, which are two contested neighborhoods, and representatives of Ir David, the City of David Project, which is considered a settlement organization, as well as representatives of the Israeli municipality, uh, their planning department, and the state's attorney's office, and various NGOs, including the UN OCHA. So we focused a lot on the international law that governs, um, although that's kind of tricky in that the two various sides of the issue debate whether or not international law actually does control and apply in this situation. So we looked at things like the law of occupation, the Geneva Convention, um, various human rights treaties, but always with this caveat that the Israelis contend that those laws are not in force here. Um, so that was our primary focus. We also necessarily had to look at a lot of domestic law because we were studying housing and zoning and municipal services. Um, and so we would have to, to look at that as well, but our overarching framework was an international perspective. Well, it is a challenging set of legal issues and they knew that and we talked about that at the very beginning of the course. Um, it's, it's some of the, actually the most challenging legal issues one could imagine because of the very strong emotions on both sides of the issues and of course the dispute uh, between the Israelis and the Palestinians is very long-standing and uh, is very complicated. It involves many layers of issues and so um, a lot of our work before we made the spring break trip was just trying to uh, go through some of those layers of complexity and also understand the different narratives because the people obviously in that area have very different views about uh, what's happened in the past and about the rights of different people who live there. You know you can read this person's argument and then this person's argument and say oh, I think this argument is stronger and then you know you kind of buy if you can start to buy into one narrative um, and then you go and you realize that there are two very persuasive narratives and that it's really difficult to say no this one is true and this one's false. 
going actually clouded things up again. Um, but I don't think that was a bad thing. One of the, of course, skills as a lawyer is often to try to sift through different narratives and perspectives to try to understand where the truth might lie, and I think that's an ex extremely valuable uh, skill for the students to develop as they become uh, lawyers. Um, more practically, one of the uh, activities we did on the spring break trip was, of course, interview a wide range of people, and uh, that included high-level officials all the way down uh, to people who just might be um, protesting issues or uh, just in involved in a particular house dispute and the students had to develop skills in trying to figure out how to interview different types of people and how to listen to them and understand their stories but also ask them probing questions. When dealing with the highly politicized and polarized issue of the peace process and specifically East Jerusalem, our group was able to limit some of our personal views and ensure that we had a neutral stance going into meetings and interviews, primarily because we wanted to elicit helpful information from groups and individuals rather than invoke a adversarial debate. It's part of the effort that we're now developing at Duke to increase opportunities for students to do experiential learning where they can not only learn in the classroom but also take the readings and ideas that they've learned in the classroom and then apply them abroad and, uh, and actually uh, go on the ground in, in locations that they've been studying and learn about issues firsthand. I think it's really important in any field of the law to remind yourself on a regular basis about the way that the law is a living instrument that affects people's lives. Um, I think that lots of times we can get so focused on the textual side of the law, um, that we shy away from the broader implications and the way that it really does determine the way people live on a daily basis. And I think going to Israel reminded me that that's something that I need to constantly be doing and I need to constantly be trying to remind myself of the way that the words that I study every day shape people and um, really, I mean, drive life for, for everyone.